Hello, good evening. We are reconvening for, to open session at 710. A report from closed session, please. With respect to every item of business to be discussed in closed session, pursuant to Ed Code 35146 and 48912, Government Code sections, and the Family Rights and Privacy Act, um, I move for the expulsion of student C with suspension of the expulsion order and to allow the student to return to school with placement in, alter in alternative education programs. I'll second. Aye. 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 In addition, uh, we I also move for the expulsion of students student A and student B. I'll second. Aye. 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 In regards to public empo employee appointment pursuant to section 4954957B for the 2019-20 school year, the following administrative staffing assignments are being made. The, bo the board voted to appoint Ginger Dunn as principal of Mount George. The vote was as follow. It was unanimous for the board members present. We can uh, welcome now Principal Ginger Dunn. Can you please stand up. Where is she? Can you stand up? There we go. Welcome to the family here. Uh, the board voted to appoint uh, Mike Smith as assistant principal of Serrato Middle School. Mike couldn't be here tonight, but we welcome him. Um, and the vote uh, from the board was unanimous. In addition, uh, pursuant to section 54956.9, the board voted to approve the settlement of a student's claim for services in OAH case number 20190200065, a motion by Trustee Gracia and second by Trustee Water. The board voted unanimous, unanimously. That's all report, uh, reportable items. Thank you. And now if everyone can rise for the flag salute, we'll have our students of the month lead us in, in the flag salute, please. This meeting is recorded for viewing on Napa TV 27, something new. This is on the district's YouTube channel and a recorded web streaming video is allowed. Um, approval of agenda. Before we approve the agenda, I'd like to amend item J, or excuse me, amend item J1A and move before F, students of the month. That would be for College and Career, or excuse me, Annual Community Advisory Committee Inclusion, the presentation of Annual CAC Inclusion Awards. I'd also like to amend item K3C to J1D, and this would change to an informational item. I'll uh, motion to approve as amended. I'll second. First by Mr. Gracias, second by Ms. Uh, Gonzalez Mares. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Recognition of visitors and employee organizations. If you can please stand, wave at us. Ms. Gail Young and Ms. Ginger. Okay, thank you very much. And so now we move for the annual community advisory committee for the presentation of the annual CAC inclusion awards. Members of the board, Superintendent Musetti, 
I would like to introduce to you first our uh, CELPA director, Ginny Maywald, and our CAC. It was. It's green. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to introduce for you our, our CELPA director, Ginny Maywald, and our Community Advisory Committee Chair, Samantha Coburn, who will assist in presenting the awards for this evening. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, I don't think it's long. Anyway, um, thank you, Board, for this opportunity tonight, and Superintendent Musetti. Um, I'm not going to give this much of an introduction because we have a beautiful hostess for this evening, Ms. Savannah Snyder. And you will be inspired. So just prepare to be inspired and enjoy this segment of your meeting. And um, our theme this year is see the able, not the label. So uh, you will see some amazing students um, that have won our poster contest and some inspirational adults and students who um, are our inclusion award winners this evening. So thank you very much once again. And um, I'd like to at this time introduce our hostess this evening, Ms. Savannah Snyder. Oh, I'm sorry. One person. Samantha Colburn, who is our chair. Please come up. Yes. Sorry about that. Good evening. Thank you, everyone. It's an honor. I really do appreciate um, serving on the CAC. This is the best night ever. I so appreciate everyone putting out their best drawings with, from these young kids. It is so inspirational to see what they put together and to have staff do such wonderful hard work with our children. Um, it brightens my heart to see this, so I'm so thankful that we can um, have this opportunity to tell you thank you. So, thank you. Welcome to the 2019 CAC Inclusion Awards presentation. CAC stands for the Community Advisory Committee. Committee. I am pleased to be chosen as a hostess for this evening's award. My name is Savannah Snyder, and I'm a freshman at Vintage High School. Some of my interests are playing club and high school soccer, hanging out with my friends, and community, community work. The Napa County CAC Inclusion Awards is an annual event. The CAC Awards are prestigious and there were many non nominations for the Inclusion Awards, making it a difficult task to make the final sele sorry, selections for this awards. The CAC selected individuals who are, successfully including, who are successfully including students with disabilities in the general education classroom curriculum and the extracurricular activities. The theme for this year is See the Able, Not the Label. I would like to thank people who nominated educators and students and the many students who submitted their artwork. Award winners, please come, to the, please come up when your name is called. I will start with the student artists. Christina Man Mahansala, Northwood 2nd. And second, Jodwin Michael Abino, Northwood First. <laughs> and And third, Adelaide, Ra Adelaide Reagan, Browns Valley first. <laughs> Ella Reed, Browns Valley is second. <laughs> Kate Adams, Browns Valley third.
Isabella Robledo Tejeda, Browns Valley first. Lila Petit Home, Browns Valley first. <laughs> Eva Young, Northwood second. <laughs> and then Alyssa Liv, Browns Valley third. Congratulations to this year's talented artists. Let's all give a round of applause for our student artists. Oh, you guys sit down. <laughs> Now I would like to present this year's Inclusion Award winners. First from our elementary schools. From Snell Elementary School, Chloe Ferris. Um, she's a second grade teacher. Ms. Ferris goes the extra mile for her students with disabilities. She finds ways to promote inclusion and foster friendships. She creates tasks and rewards that involve teaching and reading by typical students to disabled students. She, creates she created a daily schedule using photos so her disabled students would be included as well. <laughs> From Northwood Elementary School, Holly Cloud, second grade teacher. The first day Holly began teaching, she approached Shannon Middleton, a special education <laughs> teacher to create a buddy program between the two classes. Shannon and Holly meet weekly to collaborate and design lessons and activities to include every child. Every Friday, their special education and general education classes merge, and Shannon reports that the special education students are thrilled to join their group of general education students. From Browns Valley Elementary School, Noel Humphrey. <laughs> Noel is a dedicated, caring, and inclusive of all students. She encourages group play, fosters independence, and teaches kids to interact and how to become a friend. Noel makes inclusion a reality for all students, including students who are nonverbal, earning her the title of a superhero from parents. Noel is reported to have an excellent rapport with people of all ages, and in the words of parents and colleagues alike, she is amazing. <laughs> from Redwood Middle School, Valerie Vivar, speech specialist. Valerie created an autism awareness campaign to inform teachers and provide them additional insights into working with children on the spectrum. Her goal was to enroll the teachers' assistance in creating a culture of caring that was more inclusive of children with the autism. Valerie created a series of videos that she shared with teachers and students who commented that they were, all, that they were well done. The outcome was teachers asking questions concerning autism and sharing experiences to help other students interact with more kindness and support for children on the spectrum. Valerie would like to expand her informational outreach to share with more teachers and in turn more students to create a culture of acceptance. As Valerie says, I cannot imagine a world where anything less than compassion and caring in a, are commonplace. <laughs> From Napa High School, Nancy Rocha, instructional aide. Nancy. Oh. Nancy has taken the time to support a nonverbal student to use his speech-generated device on and off campus. Nancy has learned that more than one device to model language and included the special student in conversations out in the community. The student's parents report that his ability to converse with his peers, with his peers are increasing and his parents are pleased to see him growing.
You guys can be seated. Now for an exceptional group of student award winners, all seniors from Vintage High School. Kalina Jasecki, president of Power Palace Club. <laughs> Brian Olson, vice president of Power Palace Club. <laughs> Amanda Mooney, member of Power Palace Club. And Kay Ilsley, member of Power Pals Club. <laughs> Kalina has a huge heart. She has spent many lunch periods hanging out with the members of our club, helping them feel normal and special at the same time. She made this club her priority despite an extremely busy schedule and has worked hard to plan events for the club. She has a wonderful way with students who need support or understanding. Ryan has devoted countless lunches and weekend hours to befriending students in our special education program that are normally invisible to most mainstream students. He has been an active member of Power Pals for the last three years. He recently attended the Better Together prom and went all out ensuring that everyone felt included and had a great time. Amanda is a stellar member of the Power Pals Club. She attends every meeting with a clear understanding of what it, this means to students who often don't get to socialize outside their special day classes. She contributes and doesn't do it for recognition or resume building. She has been a tried and true friend to all the Power Pals Club. Kate is always at lunch every other Tuesday, even when others are busy and have other things on their mind. Kate, Kate's teacher's comments, I have been so touched by her loving and supportive way with our special needs students. She is enthusiastic, unafraid, and full of love. I have been so grateful for her membership in the Power Pals Club. They are truly deserving of this award. <laughs> Congratulations to our Poster Artist and Inclusion Award winners. Thank you for being here tonight. And how about tonight's MC? And how about um, Miss Savannah? Thank you. You led us this evening in a beautiful way. Aww. And it takes a champion parent to be Samantha Coburn. So thank you for being a parent and our chairperson this year. You've been fabulous. And finally, Terry Lynn Rossetti, um, no one with more resilience, strength, beauty inside and out to lead the charge here in Napa Valley Unified School District. Thank you. Can we have all the can we have all the award winners come back up for a picture all together?
Okay, recognition. We're going to start with recognition of students of the month. And we're going to start with American Canyon High School first. Good evening, distinguished board members, Napa Unified School District staff, and families and friends. I am Julie Herdell. I'm interim principal at American Canyon High School. And I am very pleased to say that American Canyon High School is a project-based learning school. And we have very high expectations for our students and our staffs. Our senior counselor nominated the top two senior students with the most community service hours. And we have Joshua Padilla, <laughs> and Joshua, I love lunchtime because Joshua typically has a microphone in his hand and he is leading students in different activities and from the first day I saw him with the microphone I said you know what we have something in common because we both love the microphone. Uh, Joshua is our associated student body vice president and is an integral part on the campus community. He is dedicated 900 and 62 hours and 45 minutes in community service by helping staff members after hours and during Summer College Readiness Academy. He has volunteered in our local Boys and Girls Club in American Canyon and has completely dedicated his time and effort to the class of 2019. Joshua, okay, hello everyone. And as Ms. Herdell has mentioned, um, my name is Joshua Padilla. I'm a senior at American Canyon High School and also the ASB Vice President. Um, I've dedicated myself a lot to the school and my class. I've been in the leadership class for all four years of high school and including two years at American Canyon Middle School. And I've also attended um, Napa Junction Elementary School. So I've been in the district since the very start of my education. Um, I'm very passionate about helping my school and being in the community since I'm not as like a sports person. I take my extracurriculars more into um, the school itself. So as she mentioned, I volunteered mainly at the Boys and Girls Club at American Canyon. I spent every summer there since my freshman year. Um, I volunteered there for over well, almost 200 hours each summer, which is why I've been able to gain um, over 900 hours. Um, I've also helped the Summer College Readiness Academy, which is why I've earned a lot of hours as well. I've done it for two summers. But then all the little things that I do within my clubs uh, for Link Crew and NHS, as long as, along with my other clubs, um, I'm president of the Environmental Club and our A Squad Club, which is our student section. So we go to our sports events and support all of the football, volleyball, basketball, all of those types of events there. And I'm also part of the Multicultural Club. I'm the vice president. So I'm pretty more involved within the activities aspect instead of the sports. Um, but I'm very passionate about that. And all of that comes from my family, which is out there today. Um, without them, I wouldn't be who I am today. And without the leadership skills that I've developed in the program, I wouldn't be the person who I was today. Otherwise, I'd just be someone who's probably in the outer circle instead of in the inner circle. But um, this year, our theme is we're all in this together. Um, for the school year since we're in ASB we decided to make our theme more based on inclusiveness which is why this year is all based on that so I'm very passionate about helping for, uh, making sure everyone is involved and so then everyone can have the equal opportunity to enjoy their high school experience um, but I'm also passionate about education as well um, I'll be attending Sacramento State in the fall as a, um, a child development major um, and I'll be attending um, eventually their um, teaching credential program to become an elementary school teacher in the future. So, yeah. thank you. So, yeah. 
I look very forward to that as I've been wanting to work in education my entire life. So I feel like everything that I've worked towards up to this point has got me towards that goal. And I thank you guys so much for this opportunity as well as Ms. Herdell and my senior counselor for nominating me and my fellow um, award recipient for student month. She actually earned more hours than me and it's kind of been a, like a little competition between the both of us because we both have worked at the Boys and Girls Club together as well during the summers and I'll let her talk more about that. But thank you so much for the opportunity. And our next student is Tammy Lamb, and she is president of the Key Club on campus and a valedictorian. <laughs> Tammy has helped to create several events on and off the campus in our American Canyon community. So her peers can do volunteer work to improve our positive influences on others. She is a leader in all groups that she is associated with and all sports that she participates in. Two weeks ago, Tammy was awarded Youth of the Year by the City of American Canyon. Thank you for the 1,029 hours of dedicated community service. Congratulations, Tammy. So hello and good evening, everyone. As she mentioned before, my name is Tammy Chow Lam. I'd like to first thank you all for coming on this evening, inviting me and my family for being here. To start off, I'd like to talk a little bit about my family. My family came from the Vietnam War and eventually moved to San Jose and had me and my older brother. Once so I was about two years old, we moved to American Canyon. Therefore, I've been going to Napa Valley School Unified School District since then. I went to Dawson Elementary School, American Canyon Middle School, and I am soon to be graduating from American Canyon High School. After American Canyon High School, I plan to attend San Jose State with the intended major of corporate, corporate accounting and finance. When I was younger, I didn't understand why education was so important to me, but as I grew up, I realized that I needed it to get far in my life. Therefore, I was able to use the support from my family and my family's history to be where I am today. Inside of school, as mentioned, I am one of my classes of all Victorians. I was part of the badminton team, the varsity badminton team for all four years, and I was captain for two of them. I was also part of National Honor Society and Link Crew for one year, Key Club for all four years, and served as vice president and eventually president. Other than these extracurriculars, I'm also a part of choir. I was a section leader in my sophomore year for chorus. And last year, I received Vice President of the Year within my division, basically meaning that within all the other 13 schools in my division, I was selected as Vice President of the Year. Other than this major award, I was also awarded other smaller Officer of the Month awards for my home club. As mentioned before, last April, I was also awarded Youth of the Year during the American Canyons Recognition Ball. A few places that I volunteer at are the American Canyon Boys and Girls Club site, the American Canyon Library, anything involving the, the Kiwanis Club of American Canyon, American Club, <laughs> Canyon Parks and Recognition. I'd like to thank everyone who has supported me and especially involving ours because I found a passion for loving people and helping them in, in general. Lastly, I'd like to once thank again, thank everyone for inviting me and my family for attending this conference and nominating me as Student of the Month for the month of April. Even though I said thank you countless amount of times, the number of times I say it does not suffice the gratitude that I feel. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a nice rest of your day.
Napa High School. Thanks for letting us come and present our uh, wonderful students from Napa High. I'd like to first call up uh, Joseph Ballesteros. Joseph, could you please come up? <laughs> Joseph is here with his uh, mother Carolina and his father Miguel. And Joseph uh, is, um, he's a junior at our school. He has a 4.6 grade point average. His past, he, he loves chemistry and math. He also works uh, many hours at Target. He holds down a job while holding down a 4.6. Um, in his, in his pat, in his, in his time off, he studies, he says. And then, and then I asked him, you know, I always ask students, what is your passion? Because, you know, that's what drives us, our passion. And his passion is why and how things work. And, and then I started talking to him about it, and he said, you know, I like those driving questions and uh, research. You know, I like to research, I like to know how things work. And then he also shared that uh, this summer he was able to receive uh, a, a very desired internship at the Queen, and he'll talk about that later. So I'd like to let Joseph uh, say the rest. Joseph, go ahead. Hi, I'm Joseph Ballesteros, and I'd like to begin by thanking the NVUSD School Board of Education, Mr. Silva, my school counselor, Ms. Bogarin, and most importantly, my parents. I've attended Alta Heights Elementary School, Silver Auto Middle School, and currently Napa High School. During the beginnings of my freshman year, I was in all prep classes and I was completely oblivious to honors and AP classes. It wasn't until my school counselor, Ms. Bogarin, encouraged me to take a rigorous course load that I realized my passion and my potential. And so before you know it, I was drenched with challenging courses like honors pre-calculus and AP world history, but I also discovered my passions in classes like AP biology and AP chemistry. I continued to take classes that interested me at the Napa Valley Community College. These included statistics, trigonometry, psychology, and California history. Looking back, my freshman year self would think this to be impossible. However, through the challenging courses, I was able to find my interest with a particular one being the scientific method. Each year, whether it was in AP Biology, AP Chemistry, or even Statistics, I found myself engaging in the scientific method. It allowed me to understand why things worked, and more importantly, it was the do-it-yourself version of learning. I plan to continue my relationship with the scientific method over the summer at an internship with a neurologist from the Queen of the Valley. We will be conducting experiments to help find better um, better treatments for strokes. As I continue my education, hopefully at Stanford University, the scientific method will undoubtedly follow me as I was able to develop a strong foundation at Napa High School. Like many, I do not know, a def I do not have a definitive choice on a major. However, I plan on studying a wide range of topics, including chemical engineering and neuroscience. At the center of my studies will be the scientific method, and in reality, I would not be standing here today with such large ambitions if it wasn't for the constant encouragement of and exposure to math and science at Napa High School. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Thank you.
Our next student is Mia Khan. Mia, you want to come up here, please? Mina, I'm sorry, Mina. So I always call the students uh, in, into my office. I just want to talk to them, so I want to get to know them. And uh, Mina has a 4-7. She's on the swim and water polo team. She's on a traveling water polo team, and it's a pretty high level she plays. Uh, she, she takes honors in AP courses. She's in marching band, jazz band for three years. Um, and I, 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 I also asked her about her, her passion. And her passion is, she said, the environmental piece. And this was a quote, and I asked her if I could use this quote. Uh, the planet, um, you know, the environmental piece, the planet, as, uh, keep her as healthy as she once was. And so that's the planet Earth. So she wants to keep the planet Earth as health, healthy as she once was. Um, and uh, she, you know, I, I really see her as a lifelong learner. Uh, she likes to read about sports, and um, and she loves to read, and that's Mina. So let me present Mina Khan to you. Mina. Thank you, Mr. Silva. Good evening. My name is Mina Khan. It is an honor and a privilege to be standing in front of you today. In similar fashion to other high-profile speeches, there are a lot of people that deserve my thank you. Firstly, thank you to the school board for recognizing me as Student of the Month. It is a great honor. Um, thank you to Superintendent Dr. Musetti and my principal, Frank Silva. I think I owe all of my teachers both a thank you and an apology for supporting me all of these years. And finally, thank you to my parents for loving me unconditionally and encouraging me to be whoever I want to be. I've been a part of the NVUSD school district my whole life. I attended elementary school at NVLA, middle school at Harvest Middle School, and I'm currently a junior at Napa High School. My years in school have, have certainly taught me how to learn and given me a passion for learning, but more importantly, they've taught me the value of community. Everywhere that I've gone, I feel as though I've been a part of both the school community and the community of Napa. I've done this primarily through extracurricular activities. My love of arts and athletics definitely started when I was very young and was highly encouraged by my parents. My love for the performing arts started at my elementary school and VLA. I danced hula for three years with Maestra Kenna, and I first learned how to play the saxophone through their music program. I developed my inclination for music with Mr. Day in the Harvest Band and Choir. Today, I am assistant drum major of the Napa High School Marching Band, and I was recently in the Napa High School drama department's play, A Tale of Two Cities. I didn't find my love for sports, specifically water polo, until middle school when my PE class made me realize that I wasn't very good at running. I am currently playing for the Napa High water polo team and the Napa High swim team and have loved all three seasons with both sports. Something that I have learned from being part of such a close, welcoming community is the value of helping others. I volunteered at the food bank last summer, and I hope to find other volunteer opportunities this summer. Volunteering was a really empowering experience for me because it showed me that even the little things that you do have an impact on other people. I hope to have a positive impact on everyone that I meet and a positive impact on this community long after I am gone. As of right now, I hope to attend Princeton University with a concentration in biochemistry. I know that when my time comes to walk through Memorial Stadium for the last time, I will be sad to have left such a huge part of my heart behind. However, I know that my family will still be a large part of the community as my little brother is going to be a freshman at Napa High School next year. I am nothing but excited to see this community grow and become a home for others, just as it has been for me. Even after I graduate, the NUSD community will continue to be a big part of who I am as a person. I look forward to what my future will bring, but will never forget that it was my experiences here that led me to it. Thank you. One thing I forgot to, uh, Carol, uh, Carol Kahn, uh, Mina's mother's here, so, Carol.
Can we have all the student of the month come up, please, so we can take one final photo? Public comments. Members of the audience may address the board on any school related matter that is not on the agenda. The board will not take action on any issues raised during this section of the ag agenda, excuse me. And as much as board action is limited to posted agenda items, speakers are requested to limit their comments to a maximum of three minutes. And we are going to call as a group Cole, Tori, Grant, and Fred Morris. Yes, Acting uh, President Martin, Trustees, and Dr. Mercedi, uh, these four uh, young gentlemen uh, had approached me uh, earlier this uh, last week, actually, last week, not last week. And uh, we wanted to get them on the, on the agenda here, uh, but time had passed. And so we're going to allow them public comment to share with you their senior capstone uh, presentation. Okay. Okay, I was, I was waiting for a, uh, the slides presentation. Sorry, but um, I'll... all right. So, um, thank you everybody for um, listening to our senior capstone tonight. Um, so, I am Cole Geschwinder, and I am along with my friend, uh, my friend Grant. Troy Barrett and Fred Morse, and we are going to be talking to you guys about the riveting topic of uh, switching the hand dryers at, uh, at Vintage High School. So um, let's see. So we're going to combine our time together, and we are about going to have a, around an eight-minute presentation, and we're going to save questions to the end if you guys have any. So a little bit about us. Um, we are a group of seniors at Vintage High School doing our senior capstone. Um, we got the idea of trying to improve the bathrooms at uh, Vintage by um, just, a, just a random idea because we all kind of have a strong feeling at Vintage that it's uh, unsanitary a little bit and even though the custodians work very hard to try to keep it sanitary, uh, it still kind of gets messy. and. Um, out of a public polling opinion for our first day we got a hundred petitions saying that we should continue and do uh, this project um, and then we we found some valuable information along in this process that we would like to share with you guys uh, so the research that we have done it, it all started uh, with Jeff Aguiar the head um, custodian at Vintage High School uh, who helped us really kickstart this project. Um, he got us connected with Stephen Hunt, the, the former American Canyon head custodian and former Napa High School uh, custodian. He gave us some really inf uh, valuable information about hand dryers since American Canyon has had hand dryers since they have been around and him switching to uh, Napa High School has uh, really given us a good opinion on um, a custodian standpoint of the benefits that hand dryers can have on a school. Um, so we got the model that Stephen Hunt recommended that has been working for him at his time during American Canyon, which was the accelerator hand dryers. Uh, we got connected with CNL Supply Company, a distributor from Los Angeles. Uh, and we got a quote for eight hand dryers 
and um, we also, throughout our research, uh, solved many of the problems that administration at Vintage High School has uh, asked us questions about. So I'll move it along to Tori, who will talk to you about the solutions that we have come across. So when we presented this to the administration at Vintage, there were obviously lots of questions they had, and we luckily did our homework and got the answers to them. Um, one of our main points was that paper towels are one of our biggest contributions to our bathrooms being uncleanly in general, um, be that people will take them out of the, uh, the rolls and throw them throughout our bathrooms, clogging toilets and clogging sinks. Um, they are used, that's also vandal vandalization, um, vandalism, sorry. Um, that happens daily. We always walk in, even me, whenever I go in. I have to talk to Jeff within the first half of the day, and I'll walk in, and there will be uh, paper towels everywhere, and he will have said that he just went in a few hours ago and cleaned the place. So it's a really big issue for us. Um, also, they since people are throwing them in, uh, around in the bathrooms, there won't be any left for people to actually use them for their intended purpose thus people being upset and ripping the entire units off the wall and stuff, things like that. Um, hand dryers, uh, specifically the ones that we have found, have uh, posed the opportunity to eliminate this entire problem. Um, this is a quote that we found by Mona Suho, who is a social development expert uh, for the Jamaica Social Investment Fund that kind of sums up part of our issue. Um, garbage was constantly pre present in the community. This sent a signal that no one cared about the place. It was an invitation for vandalism. So this is uh, happening with us as well. People will make the bathrooms unpresentable, and that does not warrant people wanting to take care of them, thus making the problem even worse. Um, uh, another actual big benefit for our hand dryers is they're uh, way more eco-friendly than what we are dealing with right now. Um, our hand dryers will run off of our vintage high school solar system, and the uh, pro uh, production and delivery only has to happen once, uh, whereas we have to get multiple pallets of paper towels and bags to put those um, used paper towels into once they've been used by students in the bathrooms. Um, this also cuts down on CO2 emissions. Um, it also helps dissolve the waste issue that we have in the bathrooms, just completely eliminating the paper towel issue. Hello, my name is Grant Meeks, and I will be talking about um, the money, the, <laughs> the important part. Um, as of uh, May 1st, um, we have spent, uh, we have purchased over 240 cases of paper towels and replaced 43 towel, paper towel dispensers. And this has cost the school a total of $8,780 this year alone. By the end of the year, this could look more like Ten thousand um, dollars. The prices of hand dryers, um, from our quote, we got the cost of one accelerator hand dryer would be three hundred and ninety dollars after um, the school discount that they gave us. The estimated cost of installation would be um, fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars per unit, and the shipping cost would be about. $416 according to our estimate. But stick with me here because uh, there's no need to worry about the cost of electricity because we run 90% on solar. That being said, the cost would be for eight hand dryers would be $15,536 to $19,536 in the first year. Um, so in the first year, we're kind of in the hole for money. And the second is when the return on investment starts to come back. And 
you know, $2,880 is still a, a good amount to have saved. And you might think at that cost, well, is it really worth it at that point? Well, just look, um, five years down the road, we save $25,000. So that being said, I will hand it off to Fred to further elaborate. As Grant said, my name is Fred Morris. And this is a graph showing approximately the relationship that we're going to be, uh, that each, uh, the paper towels and dryers will be uh, costing us per year. As you can see, the dryers are initially going to be much more than the paper towels. However, it will stay relatively, uh, it will basically not increase in comparison to the paper towels. Um, and you can see our total savings goes up very, very high. As Grant said, it will take a few years for it to finally reach its, where we're gaining profit. However, uh, if we keep going, it goes higher and higher. Um, as Tori was talking about, this is the, uh, a sort of, it's a rough estimate of how much uh, CO2 emissions each, um, each uh, choice we have. Uh, right now, we're using regular paper towels, which is, it's very, very uh, inefficient in terms of CO2. However, we're going to switch to the red, uh, the accelerator, uh, and hopefully we can not only reduce costs, but also reduce our environmental footprint. Uh, to conclude, most of our, this will be saving the district a whole ton of money. Uh, it's environmentally friendly. It improves the cleanliness of the bathrooms and overall, well, I guess enjoyment of going to the bathroom. <laughs> um, some references that we've talked to, we've talked to Jeff Aguiar, uh, Albert D'Souza, Sarah O'Connor, our principal, Mike Pearson, our previous principal, Stephen Hunt, Mary McMurray, and you guys. <laughs> and our ask is that you help fund this project in order to better our schools and not only become more uh, economically uh, successful, but also environmentally and sanitarily and successful. And I know you guys are heavy on the unity part of our school district, and we, we would like to pilot this for you and ha eventually get Napa High School, American, or not American Canyon, excuse me, uh, every other school involved in this, and uh, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, can we agendize so we can actually, not for today, but for another day so we're able to ask questions? Because I know that because it is in um, public comment, we can't ask questions, and I would really like to ask some questions. <laughs> the other way we can handle it, um, tr uh, uh, Acting President uh, Martin, is if uh, the uh, vintage high school students would like to stay during our report time, uh, we could engage during the report time tonight. Are you in a rush? Are you guys in a rush? Uh, what time would that be at? <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we're, we're close to there. We have some other public comment to go through and then we'll be moving to reports as the next agendized item. Does that work? Okay, great. Okay. Bailey Stone. Hi, my name is Bailey Stone. Um, I'm a senior at Vintage, and I'd just like to thank you guys for your time. I'll be representing Jenny Olson, the executive director of the nonprofit Teens Connect in town. I'm the teen council president. Um, she couldn't make it tonight due to prior commitments, so I'll be reading her comments. 
I'm here to speak today on behalf of our youth, specifically our LGBTQ youth, and to ask that we consider to request our request to fly the rainbow flag above City Hall during June, which is Pride Month. According to the most recent California Healthy Kids survey, 44% of LGBTQ students in the NVUSD district considered suicide in the last year, compared to 13.5% of our straight or heterosexual students. 44% is nearly half of our LGBTQ students. This survey also shows there is an increased rate of alcohol and drug use among our LGBTQ high school students. 38% are actively using drugs and alcohol versus 18% of our heterosexual students. These numbers are staggering and while there are many social determinants of health at play here, there's information, this information makes me wonder if our LGBTQ youth might not feel that they belong. Through my work with Teens Connect, I see firsthand the issues that are plaguing our youth. Over the past two years, I have heard from approximately 1,500 middle and high school students about specific issues they are struggling with. So many share that they suffer from debilitating anxiety, depression, suicide, suicide ideation, and social exclusion. Many are bullied and feel that they don't belong. Many engage in unhealthy behaviors as coping mechanisms. Together with our school district, the county, our hospitals, and our amazing nonprofits in town, we're working hard to support the mental health and well-being of our students by adding new programs and initiatives every year. Most importantly, we are engaging our youth in this work. They are heartbreaking and stigma. There is heartbreak and stigma around mental health and opening the conversation among their peers about what it means to be inclusive and accepting. We adults must do better for our youth. We must lead the way to a more accepting and inclusive community for our children. Flying the rainbow flag would symbolize acceptance and inclusiveness as well as give the message that our LGBTQ youth are not alone. So thank you for allowing me to read Jenny's comments. And I just want to add one more thing while I'm up here. Um, I planned an event called Students Rock the Congress that's going to be happening on May 30th, Thursday at 4 p.m. in the Crusher Gin Gym. Um, our superintendent, Dr. Musetti, will be speaking, as well as our congressman, Mike Thompson, Liz Alessio, Ryan Gregory, and a student from St. Helena High School. So I would invite you all to attend. Thank you. Joelle Gallagher. Good evening, and uh, Bailey and I were at the City Council the other night, so uh, we uh, asked them to fly the rainbow flag, and now we're asking the school district to do the same, but thank you. Um, I'm Joelle Gallagher. I'm with First Five Napa County, and I think I'm going to start hanging out at the school board meetings because they are so incredibly inspiring. I love <laughs> seeing all the students, and they're a whole lot more fun than the other public meetings <laughs> that, I, that I go to. So, um, as I said, uh, I'm actually here as an ally of the LGBT community and uh, want to request that NVUSD fly the rainbow flag during June Pride Month. One of the most important reasons to fly the flag is to make our LGBTQ community visible. Our current federal administration has emboldened people to express their hate toward those they see as other. This is easily done when you literally do not see people or the symbols that represent them. Flying the rainbow flag is a way to say, we see you, we acknowledge you, we value you. You are safe and welcome here. We know from research that adverse childhood experiences or trauma can have a significant impact on the long-term health and well-being of our entire population. These experiences include community conditions such as, such as the safety, ah, such as safety, belonging, and inclusion, or lack thereof. The health and well-being of our children and families depends upon our ability as a community to respect and embrace the diversity among us. Our diversity is something to be celebrated and raising the rainbow flag is one small but powerful way to express who we are and what we value. I've heard commented before in other public meetings that before we that if we fly one flag we have to fly them all. I suggest that we be open to flying any flag that aligns with our community and school values of safety, inclusion, and compassion. I envision the rainbow flag flying and children pointing and asking their parents what the flag represents. Red for life, orange for healing, yellow for sunlight, green for nature, blue for harmony, and purple for spirit. This flag flies as a reminder that everyone in our community is loved and cherished. Thank you.
Debbie Alter Star. Hello, I'm from Yonville. Not that that's relevant, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say it. And I see a lot of people here that I know, and I think flying the rainbow flag is a great idea. I'm a parent of a transgender child and have gay and lesbian siblings, um, and it would mean a lot to them. Um, so I'm here as usual, um, this is my new flavor, to talk about mental health. And I've come up with a slogan that I'm going to keep coming back until I die, um, because I feel like we're invested, we're doing great things, but we need to have a voice all of us, Joelle too, to the community to say we need to do more. We need to do more because I've literally been doing this work since second grade it, uh, of my child, sorry, my child was in second grade, so that's 13 years. And initially, the community was not literate that mental health was even a part of health. Um, that was part of the journey. Now, now we've crashed, crashed past that threshold. It's like there's a will but it's like it feels to me, I hate to say this, like we're waiting for a few more deaths or something before we really have the will. And because nobody would design communities like we design them today, knowing how many young people have mental health issues. And now we have this new one uh, called toxic stress. So everything's on a spectrum. We have a lot of kids missing schools, whether they're or a significant concerning number, let's just say that. In starting in elementary school, that's the stomach eight age, whether it's clinical anxiety or toxic stress, we need to give kids more tools. So I've been researching lately, I mentioned this briefly, the program called Center for Mind Body Medicine, which is what Parkland, the Parkland community stumbled upon when they got funds in response to their tragedy. And uh, this group is doing a lot of training in Sonoma County this summer. We can get some spots to go and sample it ourselves. I brought the speakers, as I said, over Skype to present to our wellness conference. I'd like us in the district to have some people go and experience this because it's not just uh, it's not just mindfulness. It's a small group model, and this is so crucial because I can't tell you, Cindy. You might have stories. Anyone who's worked with kids over a number of years, how many kids we see, and we see them in elementary school, and we know they're not getting tools, and then we watch them fall apart. And or they go to college and they fall apart, including some of your 4.7 students. I have one of those. Both of my kids were students of the month. They both got here, you know, and my son was valedictorian. Both went to great schools. One dropped out in two months from depression. Finally, on the right antidepressant. But it's like I can't do this stuff alone. No parent can do it alone. And most of the time when this is going on, we have a lot of high functioning, depressed and anxious kids who don't act out behaviorally, who wouldn't even know what to do with counseling if you said you're going to counseling, who don't want to go there necessarily. I am full support of counseling, but a, a smart society would not put all their eggs in the counseling basket. That's why I'm asking you to look at Center for Mind Body Medicine. I, I went and I talked to, um, to Mike Mans Mansway about it, he, he um, told me that the perception right now is that it's just a mindfulness model, which is why I think that people need to go and experience in Sonoma. Many communities are adopting this before they have adolescent tragedies, and because it is prevention, and that's what Parkland is finding out. It's not just for PTSD, and believe me, anything that's good for PTSD, boy, do we need that. So many kids have different forms of trauma and they cannot concentrate in school. In Gaza, this was used and they did peer review journal reports on it and they had 80% reduction in PTSD symptoms. Even for that alone, it would be worth it to have more people learn about it here. But also for prevention, that's what they're finding. Because these kids, these smart kids especially, or any kid, they don't come out of their shell and they can breathe well and they can keep their secrets all through their K to 12 years and then conclude that they can't connect with people emotionally. You know, there's just so many facets of it. We just have to do more. It's not just suicide prevention, it's homicide prevention. It's the kid who thinks they might be a sociopath because they're feeling depressed and they go to dark places in their thoughts. So if, if there's people, more people to follow up with me, I would appreciate it. Um, 
more on that another time. I'm waiting for some more papers to send you on it. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Martin, um, as acting president, and I don't know because we have some of the request of um, to raise and fly the pride flag during June month. Can we agendize this item um, for our next board meeting? Yeah, uh, at the end of the meeting when we call for future agenda items, I'd ask that it be uh, requested there. Requested there. Mm -hmm. So just, I will go ahead and request it there. You don't have to stay till that time. Um, and then you'll find out later on the outcome. Thank Great, thank you. Sean Magill. Hello, school board. Thank you. My name is Sean McGill. I am one of the ag teachers that used to be out at the vintage farm. I'm retired from there. I did seven years at the vintage farm. The reason I'm here is to voice some concerns about the farm moving, if that's what you're looking at doing. Um, I do know that the facility is dated. Um, it was put in by the Napa County Office of Education on property that's owned by the district. The property was originally purchased for an elementary school site, which now I understand you're not going to be needing, so it becomes surplus property. That being said, the school facility, in looking at relocating it, there's a number of concerns for safety of the animals needing to be addressed. And I know when I was there, we did have at one time, somebody stole several of our piglets. Uh, we did recover them, but that needs to be a concern. Also, during the summertime, the animals are still there. It, the, the facility doesn't just stop on, like some of your facilities, you can close them up for the summer, you're done. That facility doesn't work that way. It is a full-time job the whole year. I do know that at least when I was there during my tenure, the teachers did that summer duty for free. Um, that was because we enjoyed what we did, we enjoyed our kids, we enjoyed the animals. Well, if you're looking at trying to do farm to table, which is something I'm actually very active in right now, it's a full-time job. If you're going to be doing vegetables, think about when the vegetables are coming up for harvest, middle of summer, no students. So you have to think of it that way. Water was another big issue that we have out at the farm. Uh, to this day, city water is expensive. If you're going to start trying to farm it, you need to think about having a well put in. They're not cheap. There's also a lot of permits that have to be done that way. You also, again, sanitation, you need to have animal waste removal, which right now is all handled by septic tanks and leach fields. So you need to find out from sanitation if they'll accept the animal waste into their system. So I'm just kind of here thinking, you know, I do know that there's a lot of issues with moving the farm and they need to be addressed before you start trying to go, you know, finding out who your consultants are that's going to give you the right information. It's unfortunately, it's a very involved process and it's going to take time. And I hope the district looks at it that way that we have to have the groundwork to then move forward. The Ag Mechanics program is what maintained the facility. I understand you don't have it now. So any questions for me if you can ask them or not? Or I don't know if you can. You can't. <laughs> not during public. OK. So thank you very much for your time. And good luck. Thank you for your comments. Sir, if you could please, um, I'm going to have Mr. Damon Wright, the Executive Director of Secondary Education, take down your contact information in case we'd like to follow up. Re reports, Board of Education and Student Board Representative.
just, I'd like to remind everyone, um, if you have any questions for our vintage high school students, um, I would say that we you report out, and then it, maybe the, at the end of your individual reports, if you have any questions for the students, you go ahead and um, include those questions. Does that work? Or do you want to do it all at the end? You'll do it at the end? OK. So we'll go through our individual reports, and then at the end, we'll reserve time to engage with the vintage high school students. So boys, if you want to come up close to the podium, um, once we conclude our reports, we'll, we'll ask you some questions. Uh, so oh, is this on? Yeah. Uh, first, I would like to uh, commend the uh, four uh, vintage students that came to uh, present us about a problem that is not very prominent in the community, but it is um, serious nonetheless. Um, it, it was very well researched and it seems like you put some time into it. I liked it. Um, uh, as for my actual report, um, so uh, seniors are in the last 100 meters of their uh, run to graduation, I guess. Um, we have less than four weeks and uh, uh, everyone is starting to exhibit um, the, the typical behaviors. Um, 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 uh, we are currently taking our AP tests, so uh, that's fun. Um, uh, I would like to also uh, shout out um, those vintage students that are here, whether it be for AP government or some other reason. <laughs> uh, thank you. So I attended the teacher appreciation and uh, retirement ceremony. It was uh, very nice. They had some very long tenured teachers who received uh, recognition that day along with the teachers that were uh, retiring. And then on the 7th, I attended the Napa High Scholarship Assembly where they gave out over $200,000 of scholarship awards. So that was pretty amazing to the Napa High uh, students. Uh, and that's about the end of my report. Do you have any questions for Benjamin? We're going to do it now. Oh. Okay. Um, I attended last Friday CSBA. Um, I like to call it a retreat. Um, we were able to. Um, we met as a board. Um, some of our um, board members are not here today, but it was a great. Um, uh, meeting where, and very late meeting, I may add, uh, where we were able to discover many things, um, whether that was personally or on a business level or, or, or how we do business as a board um, from each one of our board members. So I really appreciated the time um, that we spent um, together and, and pretty, I would say for myself, align myself to different personalities because um, I think we, we were kind of needing that. We, we met together on a, on a great level. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time on Friday. Okay. There it is. Okay, on um, April 27th, I went to the Nampa Valley Unified uh, Family Fair where I saw three of my colleagues, and um, I was uh, sitting with the Master Gardeners, my other occupation but just spontaneously I heard somebody come up and start questioning about the um, new school lunches we've got and heard some completely unsolicited spontaneous praise which made me very happy um, and then also uh, that made me happy on May 1st I went over to Shearer School and did a food tasting <laughs> for a vegetarian it was like a tasting menu of vegetarian food I know you would hate it Mr. Gracia um, <laughs> vegetarian food and the kids came up and um, it was really fun tempting them with weird things like hummus and sun-dried tomatoes and the uh, vegetarian nachos were an incredible hit um, and um, I too am very happy to have spent all day um, with the board ma <laughs> with my board it's a good thing I like you and um, I thought that it was I thought it was really useful you know it'll be It'll, it'll pay off um, over the next few years. And then on the 6th, I had a meeting with uh, Ms. Vallez and Mr. Wright. We talked about supplementary texts for English. And I went over to uh, Napa High School. Again, food. I had uh, their fabulous pozole. And then today, I did the walk, bike to work school at Shearer School. 
at Shearer and Elementary where I got a certificate, a really cool little bag here, and um, the good news that a former student of mine is in graduate school at Stanford, so that cheered me up. And um, last Saturday, I went over to Solano College and saw My Fair Lady, and a former student of mine it was the music director for this play, Mr. Berkeley Rousseau. And uh, that's great. I was, it's, it's so, I just felt like, gee, you know, we're, I kind of, I'm agreeing with uh, Joel, you know, this is, it's fun what we do. Great. Good evening. Um, I just want to take a, a moment in addition to uh, uh, Acting President uh, Martin's welcome um, and, uh, and our, our report out from closed session from Trustee uh, Gonzalez. I want to welcome Ginger Dunn to the NVUSD management team. We're very, very excited um, to have her join us. And we can see she's she um, knows how to grind because she's stayed with us a couple hours here, almost into the board meeting. So, um, thank you. And we're really excited about um, onboarding inter internally some of our candidates because it's particularly important. I think here in the Napa Valley Unified School District, um, Ginger Dunn's going to come to us uh, on the management side with incredible uh, deep knowledge and capacity around the interest-based approach, which is in the ethos of our organization. And so we know that on the the NVEA membership side there's been tremendous benefit but we're always excited on our management side to grow our internal knowledge and capacity around um, what makes our organization very special and unique so uh, we look forward to working with you in that capacity and welcome aboard um, I also um, uh, I, I gave tr uh, uh, trustee Martin some incorrect information so I want to apologize for public record um, in our announcement today I did uh, we did uh, keep with the Napa TV announcement and I was incorrect trustee Martin, so I want to correct it. I want to thank Executive Director David Damico and the Technology Department. Um, tonight is our first night. Uh, we are implementing strategic goal number six, which is um, effective uh, governance. And uh, we made a couple of changes that are evident tonight. It's our first night using the California School Board Association Agenda Online Agenda Development Tool. It's up on the screens. Hopefully, those that you are, uh, those of you that are viewing, um, uh, found that it's easier to use, it's much more user friendly, and that we have um, more rationale presented around our agenda. We, it's really an attempt to make our, our business uh, more visible and transparent to our community. I want to thank the California School Boards Association uh, representatives that are here helping us launch this evening. And then also, um, again, with the tech team under uh, Executive Director Damico's direction, we have our own district YouTube channel and now no longer stream via Napa TV, but our own district YouTube channel. And so that's, a, uh, that's been a lot of work in the technical background to get ready for that transition. My goal was to get it done before year one of my uh, superintendency ended and we met that goal because we have three more board meetings to go so yay team <laughs> And um, I also, I, I did, I attended the Vintage High School, I was available to attend the Vintage High School uh, Scholarship Ceremony um, yesterday and uh, provide some opening remarks there and that was just really, it, it's incredible. I, I love in this first year of superintendency being able to participate in these end of the year activities where all of these, you know, all this hard work, right, gets to get celebrated. It's just really, it's why I get up in the morning, why I, I do this job and um, the young people are just so inspiring. And on, on, on the other side of things, um, I also uh, uh, attended the teacher appreciation ceremony and it's equally inspiring at the end of the year to celebrate our teachers and our employees that do such hard work to get those students um, to, to be able to walk that stage at, at our uh, graduation ceremony. Um, that's coming ahead or our scholarship ceremony. So I really do, this is the Teacher Appreciation Week really and I wanna take a moment to say thank you to every single um, NVEA teacher in our organization for the hard work that they do to prepare, plan and deliver day in and day out to our students and make a difference in their lives. So tremendous gratitude um, on behalf of me and I think I speak for the school board. And then, um, yay. 
And then lastly, um, despite all that busyness, I continue to prioritize school visits. And so I had a great visit with Principal O'Connor. Vintage is in the house tonight. Um, uh, Principal O'Connor over at Vintage High School. Um, Snow with Principal McCormick, where I also was with Trustee Jenkwitz, who was uh, facilitating some of those same tastings on that day with all the um, interesting new foods, foods for our, our students to um, try. And then um, uh, concluded my last visit last Thursday with um, uh, Principal Knox over at McPherson. And I continue to appreciate the hard work that our principals are putting in to make sure that we close out the school year successfully. So that concludes my report. Do we want to uh, handle the, the questions for that? And then we'll go to executive staff reports. So I noticed on your uh, projection that the uh, cost for the zellerators was flat. Uh, would there not be maintenance and repairs that would be required uh, and what would those costs look like um, when we talked to Stephen Hunt the former um, head custodian at American Canyon High School um, he was um, pretty um, he talked about how uh, there were very little problems when they put in hand dryers like 10 years ago and they were never really an issue in terms of hmm. maintenance. How, how many bathrooms do you have at Vintage? Eight, um, four boys' bathrooms and four girls' bathrooms. Is a single zellerator per bathroom sufficient, or would there need to be two? Um, a single would probably be fine for the needs of our bathroom. Okay, I thank you so much for your presentation, um, especially looking over um, saving money for the district. Hey, we're all we're all ears. Um, there are some irks when I use the accelerators, and I and one of them is the water accumulation on the ground, so that creates a safety concern for me. Um, is there anything that possibly you guys can integrate within that program to possibly um, absorb that water? And then on top of that, the residual moisture and germs. I know like, let's just say, for example, I think Oxbow is a great example of this. When you walk into their restrooms, they have an arm support where you actually pull the door. I don't know if it's an open door bathroom at Vintage. I don't know. Uh, so great question. Mm -hmm. um, so about the the sanitary, we um, we have the hand dryers stationed in an area where they're visible to the outside for one for vandalism issues and also to get the the clean air in instead of being trapped inside the bathroom and just recycling the the germs inside the bathroom. So they're they're all going to be visible outside, and that also leads in, leads into the uh, water problem. Uh, on the floor it will be more towards the entrance so most of our bathrooms are a um, a fake wall um, with the electrical outlets in and the um, the water pipes for the the sinks so and then you go around the, the wall so this would be in the middle of the um, the fake wall and the doors so there wouldn't be very uh, it wouldn't be a walkable uh, area where the, this water will be accumulating and um, it, it's a it's a small price to pay for what is going on right now with the amount of uh, water that's already on the ground because by uh, the first student of the day just hits all the paper towels down and now there uh, there's no more paper towels so the students that want to wash their hands can't dry them now so they're just gonna like air them out and then it's just going to go over the ground so that's been a problem now for a while and it, the entire bathroom's just been wet so hope that answers your questions and um, when students clog the sinks and the toilets with the paper towels that only adds to the water on the floor yes um, does it also include because we also have staff right their restrooms so I think in your estimate you're only counting the students, uh, the students. Yes. but I assume teachers don't uh, vandalize their restrooms right yes. <laughs> and stuff. I'm sure that's not we haven't seen that come up it's not a problem 
but I would assume you would want a school-wide um, kind of effort, right? Culture change in terms of this. Okay, but that's not in your numbers, right? No, just what the that. students are using. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, what have you found out in terms of? Um, you mentioned how American Kenyan High School has this in place. What have been their pros and cons? And did you implement some of those in your presentation? Or yeah, we uh, we definitely tried to um, put the pros and cons of American Canyon into our presentation. Uh, it might have not have been as clear, uh, but definitely the pros is uh, the amount of um, break, like the the breakage of the paper towel dis uh, dispensers. We have gotten uh, through like I believe it's 43 paper towel dispensers that have been replaced this year alone, and there hasn't been. Uh, I, I believe there there is only a, around a double digit for the 10 years that um, American Canyon has been around for accelerator hand dryers being replaced because of the uh, the stainless steel that it is and it's uh, reimbursed into the walls while the uh, paper towel dispensers is just plastic and they are just uh, just put on the walls instead of actually uh, fortified into the into the walls. Um, one of the cons is um, that we have tried to solve is the sanitary issue. That's been one of our biggest counter arguments uh, for the, the hand dryer um, proposal and also the, the water issue. The, those two have been the biggest cons and the biggest uh, the factors that have been put in our, um, our project, but we have been uh, trying to find solutions to that constantly. I suppose it would be too much to expect um, people not to throw uh, wet paper towels on the floor and in the toilets and not to pull the dispensers off the wall. Is that just a vain hope? Um, am I completely unrealistic? Yes, I believe so. <laughs> you believe I am? Okay, I've got another question. I'm assuming, um, you know, that we we have gender specific bathrooms at at the high schools, and I'm assuming that you're familiar with the ones that the young men use, um, and and uh, are the young women's bathrooms vandalized to an equal degree? Really? Really? Huh? Huh? Well, part of me is disappointed and part of me gets a kick out of it, I guess. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I would really just love it if people didn't throw, throw the stuff on the floor in the first place. I mean, we all experience frustration. Um, and uh, this is not a, a good way to deal with it. Uh, I have read articles. Um, there was one in the Harvard, Harvard um, Health Pub publication about a year ago. You probably saw it by Dr. Ross, John Ross. And his was about the bacteria flying all over the place. And there have been other articles in the, um, just in, you know, the regular press uh, where they've spoken, of, that have um, concerned themselves with, you know, the toilet seats that are always up or actually are never there in the first place, that that's responsible for some bacteria flying about. But it sounds as if you're um, thinking about that with the, with your location of the, um, or maybe some people just don't use the bathroom ever. Well, that is a, uh, <laughs> that is definitely part of it. Like so, some people refuse to use the restroom just because of uh, how unsanitary right. it can be. Um, and part of it is um, definitely the, the paper towels just making a mess. Right. Um, but we have, a, it actually was brought up by Tori in our group about the unsanitariness. I, I believe he read the same article as mm -hmm. you. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we switched the location to mm -hmm. where our, um, our air dryers are going to go because it's a, perfect, it's a perfect location since it's that electrical unit is on that central wall so we can choose between mm -hmm. which side we can put it on. Uh, and it's there's no tile, so it really saves on uh, the installation cost. We don't have to go through any tile, um, and that helps our custodians out a lot. Right, and of course, you know the wear and tear on the custodians is something we should consider. Mm -hmm, definitely, it would make them more efficient um, instead of just cleaning up the restroom over and over again. They can get to other problems of the day because they have many. So it's uh, 
it saves time with them as well. Well, you've given me something to think about. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Executive staff reports. Right. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Um, executive staff reports. Good evening. Instructional Services has no report this evening. Uh, just a very sh brief report from uh, the governor's uh, May revised budget. Um, no change from his proposed budget in uh, uh, in January, or minor, very minor changes, but nothing significant. HR. HR does not have a report this evening. Yes, uh, Acting President Mar Martin, Trustees, Dr. Musetti. Uh, school Planning Instruction does have a short report here. I am going to show you how I can do two things at the same time. We believe you, Mr. Pearson. Here we go. Okay. So instead of uh, talking to you about facilities, we're going to be talking to you about Measure H communication strategies. And we wanted to share with you uh, some things that we're doing differently. We will be doing differently with the communication of Measure H. And hopefully this is going to work. There we go. OK, how are, you, how are you improving our communication efforts? Uh, we're going to be establishing uh, goals to improve the, the clarity, the transparency, and the consistency of our, of our communication efforts around Measure H. Um, we've developed new and enhanced communication channels to more effectively de deliver our messages, uh, including the following things. And I'm not going to go through reading all those to you. Um, and then we're also going to be introducing a, a new Measure H logo to you tonight for the first time ever. Uh, how will we communicate uh, Measure H efforts? Uh, we're going to be doing a community mail mailer, um, and these will be going out uh, along with a broader community, uh, along with a letter from Dr. Musetti. We will be doing a at a glance flyer. It's a one pager that provides uh, a high level uh, view of what Measure H will achieve for the district and can be distributed at events. And then finally, uh, we'll be doing uh, banners and signage, uh, thanking the, the voters for all the hard for for, for their uh, support of Measure H and showing how Measure H is making improvements on our community. Uh, moving forward with the website overhaul, uh, we want to streamline the pages so it's more user friendly. We want to decrease the links to Google Drive for better user experience so that they're not clicking on several links to get into things. We'll be utilizing the website uh, for, to provide a, a greater understanding of, the, of school bonds and how they are used. We'll be adding more visuals, and we'll be launching a future Measure H blog to show, showcase the progress of our Measure H progress. And finally, the new Measure H logo to be used on all upcoming projects. This is it. So it's uh, Measure H, you'll see with the big H, uh, you'll see the building right there at the bottom is our uh, district office. And we're building on our vision here at MBUSD. So thank you. I have a question. The at a glance flyers, how are we distributing those? Or where are we using them? Yeah, we're, we are going to still be looking at how at what the most effective use is of those, but we would anticipate things such as school events, uh, even here at the Board of Education meetings and, and whatnot to, to distribute those at a glance flyers. So Open houses, back to school nights. We'll do a distribution out to school sites so principals and office staff can make it available at the school site level. And the community mailer is not just for district parents. That will go to every um, uh, Napa Valley. That will go to every resident in American Canyon and in Napa. Would that also include um, the? Um, I'm sorry, the electronic version that we use. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. We will. We will do a, a, an electronic mailing internally to our parent community as well. Sure. Thank you. Approval of consent item, consent agenda items. I, I need a motion. I move to approve consent items. I'll second. I get a first by Ms. Elba gonzalez Mares and a second by Mr. Gracia. Aye. 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 Uh, 
um, presentations and discussion items. We are going to J1B, is that correct? Measure H Technology Implementation Plan. I'd like to introduce Executive Director of Achievement and Innovation, David Damico, who will discuss the implementation plan of Measure H Technology Plan. Acting President uh, Martin and uh, um, Dr. Massetti and board members. I'm uh, very excited tonight to um, give you a high level presentation of our uh, front of classroom and student device uh, implementation as part of the Measure H technology projects. We've been sharing this with you uh, in real time as we've been uh, resetting on part of Measure H. And uh, so this evening I've provided some. Uh, uh, slides that are just going to kind of highlight the scope of the project and some of the timing. So just the reminder that uh, the projects that we have underway that are technology related are listed here. Um, the uh, Chromebooks which are part of the device rollout that will be for students, um, one to one grades 3 through 12. And uh, the front of classroom displays will be Promethean boards that will go in all of our classrooms. So that's what I'm going to cover tonight. So I just want to give you a sense of the scope of the project. We have 19 elementary schools, 5 middle schools, 5 high schools, the adult school, and uh, actually a, a little more than 900 classrooms. So each of those classrooms will be receiving uh, a Promethean board. And uh, there will be some additional Promethean boards um, deployed to other spaces where instruction may happen that may not be classroom spaces, but um, media centers and um, uh, other other uh, special day classes and other classes that we don't we don't count in our sort of normal K through six classroom. All you know, there are extra counts of classrooms that we think of in addition to the regular education classrooms. Um, the mobile interactive displays, uh, in addition to being in every classroom, will be, will be mobile. That's the key piece. So we won't be hanging them on walls. Uh, they will, uh, you know, they will sit on uh, a stand that's, that's got a good footprint. So, uh, won't fall over easily and, uh, but, but not so heavy or difficult for teachers to, to move if they want to move the learning space around within the classroom. And we're looking at about 18 months to deploy. Uh, and that's largely due to the fact that we have a, a huge number of classrooms. We're also going to be uninstalling technology, older technology in those classrooms. Uh, and then we will, we're going to make sure that teachers get real-time training as we deploy so that as we touch a school, we train and make sure that all teachers are prepared and feel comfortable and ready to use these devices. So the sample front of classroom display looks something like this. Uh, it's on a mobile stand. We will also add a document camera for teachers. That's something they all use every day in the classroom. Uh, the device comes with some pens and display tools and then HDMI cables that allow teachers to add peripherals like uh, laptops. And then there's an app that comes with this particular board called ActiveCast that allows devices uh, through the district's Wi-Fi network to uh, cast to the, to the device. In addition to this, we have uh, Chromebooks that students will um, uh, receive uh, for use in classrooms. Um, middle schoolers and high schoolers will be able to take these home. The devices will be managed by the district. That means that we will apply the policies, the updates, and the filtering to make sure that the devices um, are used for the purposes that we want them to be used for. Um, we'll also install the apps that are necessary for students to use in the classroom. For example, Study Sync is the ELA curriculum that's used in the middle school classrooms. We're also, um, it, Chromebooks are Google devices, they're, they're, they run on a Google, they run to the Google Cloud, so um, this will integrate well with Google Classroom and Google, Google Apps for Education. I talked about ActiveCast, and um, we will make 
make sure that the devices are tagged, later engraved. Uh, we call it a white glove service. It's just the devices come ready to deploy and they come inventory. So we just get a list of all the devices and we upload that into our um, asset management system and, uh, and we, we now have you know, asset control on these devices. So what does this look like? Um, we uh, continue to progress on, on these bond projects and uh, we can, we'll continue to present to you um, as, we, as we roll this out. Uh, we'll begin deploying the student devices and the front of classroom technology in the fall, really August, or when school starts. Um, middle schools will have priority for the Chromebooks because they're already one-to-one -one and the teachers are using uh, StudySync and have been using it for a couple of years and StudySync is a, is a device dependent tool or a device dependent curriculum. Um, so the timeline for the front of classroom piece, the, the Promethean boards, is the 2019-20 school year and then the student devices will roll out uh, over the same period of time. It may take us a little bit longer depending on um, uh, depending on you know how things go and how much training teachers need and how much support teachers need with um, with those devices. So remember, it's the whole environment. It's the displays, it's the devices, and it's understanding how to use those in an instructional way um, in the classroom setting and giving them the support that they need um, up front, and then making sure that they've got what we call that elbow-to-elbow -elbow training when they're in the classroom and needing support for that as well. Um, we are in the process of developing the procedures. We have um, changed the BYOD policy and um, are developing some documents that uh, we'll communicate out with our stakeholders, teachers, um, principals, and parents and students. Training will start as soon as we start deploying. And um, I think the key is that we're going to learn and adjust as we go. We haven't done a large deployment like this in this district. As you know, the policy before was BYOD. So the most we've rolled out in any given school year is about 3,000 devices. This is 15,000 devices. So that's a, that's a bigger number. And it just, uh, we want to get it right. We want to do it well. And we want to make sure that everyone uh, feels that they have the support they need, the training they need. and. Um, that they're prepared. So uh, that concludes uh, this brief presentation on the front of classroom. Thank you. Questions? I have a couple. Um, sure. Sounds like you guys have chosen boards. What led to that vendor? So we had a. You, you might remember that we had a. Uh, uh, we had we had a, an event where we had several vendors bring devices, front of classroom devices, to the technology center. And then we, uh, we invited teachers and principals and other folks to come and um, have the vendors present on each of those items. And it took an entire afternoon. Uh, we had about 45 people attend across the district, which is a pretty good number. And then we just asked them to fill out a survey, you know, likes, wonders, you know, at, uh, different kinds of features they were looking for. Um, and so when we tallied everything, the Promethean was the, was the one that was preferred uh, of, out of the five that we highlighted. And we've been using those devices. We have examples of them still in the technology center and around the district. And the Prometheans, uh, the feedback we're getting on the Prometheans is that they're very, very easy to use. They're intuitive. There's not a huge learning curve. Uh, and, um, you know, they, they really do meet the needs of um, both elementary, middle, and high school instruction. How big are the screens on the Promethean board? 75 inches. It's a good size screen. So it looks like the one you have that's in the WAPO, you know, the one that you, we were using last week in the board retreat, it's exactly like that. It's a good size. Yeah, it's a really good size. deployment of the computers and as to the one one spot. You know, I understand that there needs to be a long deployment on the on the classroom boards and you know there's a lot that goes into that, but it seems like buying a computer and setting it up doesn't seem like a super time intensive 
past. So I was just wondering, what are some of the roadblocks that I might not be thinking of to a rapid deployment of the one-to-one -one computers? I, I don't think there are roadblocks. I think it's really just staging the deployment so that um, when we deploy, we deploy a complete classroom. So when you think about um, when you think about uh, a blended learning environment, and blended learning environment is one where you're using technology tools and some traditional tools together to do enhanced instruction. Um, you're really talking about um, the features that these devices bring and how they work together. And so you, you know, because we've talked about this before, that for example, once everyone has Chromebooks, they're going to be working in a Google Classroom environment. So it's not just a matter of making sure that the, the teachers and students are comfortable with the device. I think we have a high level of comfort among teachers and students around devices because they've been around for a while in our district, even though they haven't all been a uniform device. But Google Classroom's new, Aries Gradesbook's new, the Aries student portal's going to be new. So there's a lot of new in all of that. And it's just going to take us time to make sure that people have uh, a level of comfort and uh, and uh, you know we this is one of those areas where it's better I think for us to go slow to go fast and then it, as you know we'll adjust so if it looks like this is something that people are just adopting to very quickly and everybody thinks it's wonderful and easy we can we can look at the timelines and and accelerate them if we need to thank you I look forward to your full presentation thank you any other questions? Um, more of um, for the one-to-one -one device, does that include the bring your own device as well? Or this is like we're going to have a device for the kid, even though some of them, maybe most of them have so, their own device? So the, uh, the way I've been describing this is that in the past, we, we did not as a district commit to ensuring that all students had devices. Uh, and, and there was an interest in accelerating technology use in the district and so one-to-one -one was kind of a way to subsidize what the district wasn't able to provide so families were encouraged to um, if they could have their student bring their own device in this instance we're saying you know we see a device as an essential part of instruction and so every student should have one and the district will provide one for every student if a, if a high school or middle school student, um, it's probably going to be a high school or middle school student, has a device they prefer to bring, um, they are not going to be told they can't bring one. OK. So what happens to that device that we may have reserved for them? Does that? You know, I've never had a shortage of needs for devices. So they, it would, it would be, you know, we'll have some extra inventory in libraries. So, so we'll read things like kids sometimes damage a device and we need to give them a loaner while one's being repaired or replaced. Um, sometimes parents don't want the students taking devices home, so they would check them in or out each day from the library. So there'll be places for those devices to live. And then, you know, if we, if we have enough of a surplus, um, uh, I, I was I was generous in the in the device count because you always estimate about 15 percent extra because of damage and sometimes loss, but um, you know we we'll, we we can we can also support uh, more devices at the elementary schools as well. So we'll see how that goes. We'll know and we'll know after the first year what those numbers really look like. Oh, it's good to know that's in your planning. Have, yes, I think it's really great. And just on the other side, I mean, it's crazy, right? So these kids are going to come home, and I used to say, like, yeah, the teacher told me something with the trunk. Now it's like, they're going to say display. So it's just, it's really great to see that our classrooms are um, embracing that and getting ahead with that. I mean, um, but the other side, I also think about on one side, we're telling the kids, like, less screen time, and we're adding more screen time. So I know, hopefully, in our policies and all that, uh, we'll be conscientious about also educating our families so that, you know, this little device that we all carry is also a screen, right? And so um, just kind of uh, as our culture develops, just sort of 
continue to inform and educate our, our, our parents, right? We will, and, and um, digital literacy is actually, uh, now I think there, there's, a, there's a new um, SBA legislation that's been passed around ensuring that districts provide instruction around digital literacy, digital literacy and I call it digital health. And, um, and we do have some control. So with these devices on our network, or these devices that we own and provision, we can enforce some policies that will, um, that will uh, help students make the right choices around time, screen time. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Demico, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Um, on the one-on-one -on -one display, this is just a comment. It's not a question whatsoever. but. Um, in following various meetings way before my time, and that's um, that included Jose Hurtado, Francis Chavez Ortiz, Joe, Tom, and and Rob. This has kind of been one of their long-lived dreams coming true right now. So I, when I was watching meetings prior to my campaign and 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 gaining the seat. I, I have to admit that when I kept seeing like, man, when are we going to see this? Because some of our poorest communities, which are like Redwood and Harvest, that couldn't bring or match to the devices that other schools were bringing. So thank you, and I want to commend you for your work of you and your staff. Well, I guess I'll hop in. Um, about 10 years ago, I had a reputation as, um, as a person who was anti-technology. And I was never anti-technology. I was anti the fetishization of technology, and um, technology for its uh, for its own sake, not technology as a tool for deeper learning. But I do know one thing: um, the bring your own device policy was a hardship on many of our students, particularly. Um, oh, I'm thinking of a friend of mine who had four daughters. Yeah, two of them were twins, and um, it was a hardship. It was a hardship on that family. And a lot of our students uh, told us that they had Wi-Fi at home, and they didn't. They didn't. They were uh, they f they were ashamed to say that they didn't have it. And um, so this is this is much more fair, I think. So, thank you, David. I, I did have one more question. Um, did we get charging carts for all those devices? That's a great that's a great question, and. Um, the elementary school classrooms, the devices will stay in the classrooms and the students will place those in charging carts and that's where they'll stay overnight. Middle schools and high schools, um, teachers don't like charging carts for the most part. We won't have them located in every classroom. We'll have some charging options in classrooms. Uh, and you're all welcome to come over to the tech center and see some of the cool things that are over there. But they, they have these now these floor strips that, that are uh, ADA compliant and they uh, they have you just literally put a plug you put the you put the uh, the charger the, the plug the cord on the on the strip and it fast charges the device so we'll have some of those available for students to use in classrooms <laughs> any other questions I just one last comment um, I, I do want to thank the team um, I came in pretty fast and furious around the vision for technology and it's required the team to really become adaptive around what was the original plan um, as I onboarded as the new superintendent and I think we've uh, really uh, created an opportunity to close the digital divide uh, that exists um, in many communities that is a reality and the fact that we're able to uh, use the tech portion of Measure H to close the digital divides and make sure that we are a state-of-the-art school district when it comes to technology lays an incredible foundation for the potential teaching and learning that our students deserve in the classroom. So I want to really thank the team for spending the last few months um, uh, reshaping uh, the vision of technology for the Napa Valley Unified School District and I look forward to us being a state-of-the-art technology district within the next year to year and a half. Dual enrollment presentation. Thank you. So this presentation will highlight and explain a feature of the California Dashboard's College and Career Readiness Indicator. This is a new indicator that the board has heard about um, in recent uh, months 
dual enrollment is not what it used to be. So you may have heard the phrase before, but Annie Petrie is going to talk about what's different about dual enrollment in the College and Career Readiness Indicator. And this is coupled with an information item that is also presented to the board. It's an agreement between Napa Valley College and Napa Valley Unified School District to provide college courses on our campuses during the school day uh, for college credit and for high school credit. So Annie Petrie will talk a little bit more about the dual enrollment of the College and Career Readiness Indicator.
I I do have a question. Uh, you said we're going to keep copies of the permit to attend uh, that we haven't been keeping that before. Are we going to keep those digitally or as paper? Hopefully we can encourage those paper binder people to go to the digital age. Any other questions? I do on the um, data tracking. Is there anything additional than just the permit and, um, you know, is? Just curious, like what kind of information are we trying to see if they're passing their classes? Yes. Um, if they're going on to college with how many units? Like, if you just gonna okay. So what, um, what, when I, I met with Jessica Erickson this morning, um, and what we really want is for the new tech pass right now, they they're going to have to take the And for my own purpose of learning, is it just the school districts that have this kind of agreement with our colleges or private schools as well? I'm just, in terms of... Um, in terms of the um, accountability dashboard that um, Ms. Petrie's been referring to, that's a, a California public school requirement. So I, I'm unaware if um, uh, private schools are developing partnerships with uh, community college districts. I know that this is a, a move that a lot of California public school districts are making because they want to demonstrate progress and gains on the new California. Well, it's good for kids, like Ms. Petrie yeah. said first, but we do, um, this is a, a key lever to us demonstrating progress on the, on the college and career indicator. Um, school districts that don't launch a dual enrollment initiative, uh, that will be very evident when compared to other California school districts. And so we want to be the school district that formalizes our relationship with the college to be able to do this. And I really want to commend um, Ms. Petrie, Marianne Vias, Damon Wright, who've all played a role in this, along with all the folks that uh, Ms. Petrie has named there. When I got here um, back in July, I had some early meetings with NVC, and it was very clear that there has been a long desire in the in 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 our district and in, in in our county to develop stronger partnerships between the college and the K-12 system and for a long time the organization espoused this concept of college and career ready well what I want to note is that we've taken that initiative and goal one of our strategic plan and this is a concrete implementation of college and career readiness we're no longer tossing it out as kind of a mystified concept but we're rather we're rather actually tethering it to some uh, something that's um, a result for our kids so attaining college credit and taking college courses at the high school level gives them a tremendous advantage uh, financially academically in all sorts of ways so this is really exciting that we were able to pull this off within the initial six months of the launch of our strategic plan so I really want to commend um, uh, the team for for lifting at this speed hey, one, sorry just one of the reasons I was asking that question is just because there's such a great story here and that it's so in a, in a way to highlight uh, the great work that the school district is doing mm -hmm. and that can potentially definitely attract future students from other areas great point to join our school district because how awesome is that to have your high school kid graduate already with credits credits Always. that could potentially save them a semester of cost of tuition I'm just saying so expensive. Trustee Gonzalez, I like that you're always, you're thinking about enrollment now, always, so yes, good job. Yes, we, we all are, we all are. I, um, Ms. Petrie, I'd like to thank you. I know you worked. 
I know you worked very hard on this also with the um, the initiative with the everybody taking the college board. Now that's a real life experience. I mean, our students take lots of tests, but this is the one that really does count. And so um, I think it's I think that's uh, very very important. And um, of course, we we want our students to um, graduate with units that they can use for college. This is all good, but. Um, we saw uh, a couple of students of the month have taken classes at um, Napa Valley College, and clearly the enrichment um, benefited them tremendously, you know, socially, intellectually. Mm -hmm. they, um, you could, I think it added to their self-confidence. So this is a good thing. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Petrie, uh, the only comment I had was um, I remember walking into Napa Valley College at one point uh, with um, both my boys and, and one of them was like, no, 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 I can't do this. The other one was kind of interested where Napa Valley College was offering this, but it was a really lonely place. There was only about four of us sitting in the crowd. I think there was more parents than students. Um, my son was like, why are we here? Come on, let's go, let's run for the door. Why would anyone choose to be in high school and go to college at the same time? <laughs> so I'm wondering if this is the same program, just polished, and now everyone's on board and kind of collaborated. This was like last, I think it was at the college. Okay. 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 Sounds great. Thank you. And I'll just, you know, to that point, just add that it'll create a much better access point for many of our students because I'm, my own nephew goes and takes a class at the college, but it's a coordination of three parents to drive them to the college and then back, and not all of our parents have the accessibility to do that. Um, so I think it's, it's helping um, bridge the gap and give more access to all of our students who may not have that flexibility in their household. So. I commend you for continuing to do this, and this is fantastic. So thank you. This gentleman here has a question. You can walk up. Yeah, you can come to the podium. J1D, a college and career access pathways agreement. So this is the agreement that is brought to the board for information purposes tonight and will come back to you during the March, uh, May 23rd board meeting for, a, uh, for public hearing. And it's this agreement which allows us to engage in this process of uh, sharing um, of, of accepting the college on our campuses to get credits and provide credits on the high school transcript and on the college transcript. So it's a master agreement that allows us to do this. It's an agreement between Napa Valley Unified and Napa Valley College. Ms. Zayas, that'll be coming back for action at the next board meeting? Yes. Okay. So tonight it's, it's presented for information only. Action item K1A, Resolution 1925. 
three. Oh, thank you. Thank you for turning on the mic. This is this is for the sale of the remaining general obligation bonds to continue our facilities program. I'll move. Second, Mr. Gracia. Second by Ms. Uh, Gonzalez Mares. Aye. 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 K1B resolution 1924. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, trans, um, which will provide district with cash for next year's uh, operations. We have, of course, that's a high property tax district that we run out of cash unless we borrow these funds. So we borrow these funds and repay them at the end of next year. I do have a question. How does this compare to the amount we borrowed last year? It's larger by about $10 million. And that's primarily because there's less cash available for the district to borrow and expenses are up and uh, so that, that but that's our cash analysis that we did and and so and because our reserve is down excuse me and because our reserve is reserve, down. reserves are down that's correct all motion second a first by mr. Gracia and a second by Ms. water aye 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 Aye. Human Resources, K2A, Declaration of Need for Fully Qualified Educators. Yes, yeah, so this item here, um, ideally we're going to hire teachers that are fully credentialed. That's always our first priority. Um, however, we have to prepare each year an annual declaration in the event that we have to uh, hire some teachers that on an intern or emergency type of permit. So this declaration uh, sets us up to do that if we need to. All motion. Second. Aye. Aye. But you know, one of our students of the month announced that he wants. Did you see every? Yeah, all great like news <laughs> already. <laughs> we'll circle. Yes, yeah, so this is an agreement that we need to have with Napa County Office of Education that's related to a grant. Um, that allows us to give some incentives and some um, uh, like um, tuition reimbursement and signing bonuses for special education teachers who are traditionally hard to fill and, and again in order to avoid um, having to have not credentialed teachers um, this allows us um, the opportunity to partner with Napa County Office of Ed and there is some there are some um, awards that the teachers can get um, and and this provides for if they do not complete a year of service with us then they may have to give back some of the incentive money or tuition reimbursement that was what was given to them and it would be our obligation to collect that back from them um, we're going to take measures to make sure that we give those awards at a timing where there would not be a huge impact financially on the district if for some reason we needed to collect that back and could not a motion Second. Gracias. Second by Ms. Gonzalez Mares. All those in favor? Aye. Student. K2C, Memorandum of Understanding, MVUSD, Fellows Mentor Fellow Project. All right. And so this is the other grant that we are offering for uh, a residency grant for teachers in the area of STEM. And uh, this partnership with Trellis will just give some additional mentorship um, to these brand new resident teachers. Um, and uh, this will be paid for through the grant that we already have with SSU. I'll move to approve. Second. First by Ms. Gonzalez, second by Mr. Gracia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Ms. and student. Instructional services. This item is a contract with the College Board to provide the PSAT and SAT in the 1920 school year for all 10th and 11th graders during the school day. A motion to approve. All second. I'm a first by Ms. Gonzalez, a second by Mr. Gracia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Student? K3B, approval of obsolete books from Napa High and Vintage Highland School Libraries. This is a motion to delete items from the libraries that are already obsolete, have 
old information or outdated information, um, and we we dispose of them via recycling. I uh, I had a question about what we do with the books we dispose of. Have we considered donating them to like Friends of the Napa Library? Correct. We do donate books when it's appropriate. When the material is out of date or incorrect, we, we do not donate any longer. Got it. All motion. First by Mr. Gracia. All second. <laughs> second by Ms. Gonzalez Marez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Student. K3D, approval of contract between Napa Boys and Girls Club and Napa Valley Unified School District. We've just got Boys and Girls Club coming to, to Alta Heights in 1920. That's good. Motion. First by Mr. By Ms. Gonzalez Mares, a second by Mr. Gracia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Student. K3E, adoption of high school core instructional material. This is a second read for the board around this instructional material. It came to you last uh, board meeting, and it is in the agenda tonight for action. I just wanted to make a comment that I'm looking forward to see how this uh, plays out once it's been implemented at our local uh, high schools. So I would like to motion. First by Mr. Gracia. I'll second. Second by Ms. Blanche. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Student. K-4 school planning and construction. This, uh, this, contract, this contract is is for automating our accounting in the um, facilities office. Currently, we download uh, accounting information to Excel spreadsheets and try to maintain the spreadsheets manually. This will uh, put the will have that information in a database, and it also will prepare uh, financial reports for the CBOC. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Uh, second by Ms. gonzalez Mares. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, student? Aye. That leads us to item L, board representative reports. L1, Napa Valley Education Foundation. We don't have anyone to give that report currently. L2, Special Education Community Advisory Council. Um, no one is present to give that report. All three City of Napa liaison representative, Cindy Water. Haven't had a meeting yet. Okay. All four City of American Canyon liaison, Isela and myself and Joe are there, but there is no meeting so far. L5, Town of Yountville liaison representative, David Gracia. Uh, there is nothing to report. We haven't had a meeting. Uh, L6, Athletic Task Force. I have no one available currently. L7, Equity Committee. That'd be myself. Um, I have nothing to report at this time. L8, budget and LCAP advisory, I have no one to report. M, additional suggestions and comments from board members and superintendent. I do have a, a comment. I really appreciate the hard work that's gone into moving us to our new agenda program. I am still getting the hang of it, but I like it and it's presented in such a way that it's giving us better results with more information and I I wanted to say that I really appreciate that and I too you can't see me sweating bullets over here but yes I was a little nervous but thank you very much for agenda online <laughs> yes I'm I'm loving it I think everything um, that we are set out to do um, as board members as our team and our cabinet it's pretty clear and straightforward and, um, and you can see all the attachments very clearly and I really appreciate the time it's spent on the rationale I think that's very helpful for us and um, all the viewers in our YouTube video how, how many um, like how many are out there but um, I hope that does um, help clarify um, as to the decisions that the board is making next I think it's very helpful Trustee Water and Trustee Gracia we are very 21st century now yeah <laughs> but are we influencers <laughs> um, and my last comment and to before we go into future agenda items I want to um, 
for all our for all of our Latino community, I want to wish them a feliz Dia de las Madres. Tomorrow is our Mother's Day, so we'll be celebrating that celebrating that in full force. So if you end up forgetting about Mother's Day tomorrow, you can make it up on Sunday. Um, uh, future agenda items. Um, um, Acting President Mar Martin, um, I would like to um, agendize um, and look into the possibility of flying the Pride flag during the month of June um, and further discuss that at that time in our next meeting. Because mm -hmm. June okay. is literally. So it would be our next few meeting. Weeks from now. Okay. It would be our next meeting if that would please the board. Okay. We will do that. Thank you. Any other agenda items? I will seek a motion. I'll motion to adjourn. Second. First by Mr. Gracia, Ms. Gonzalez Marez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Student? Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>